SARS-CoV-2 is everywhere. In more than 200 countries and territories. But count back from the millions of infections we have now, and it started with one. One case, one location, and one transmission. Patient zero. The focus of speculation is here, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, located eight miles from that now infamous wet market. But what the speculation doesn't highlight is that their research warned of a pandemic just like the one we have today. After the 2003 SARS-CoV-1 pandemic, Shi Zhengli, a scientist at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, began a series of field expeditions to work out where the virus had come from. Coronaviruses have been linked to a number of different animals, from camels to bats and even hedgehogs. In 2004, she discovered a natural reservoir of coronaviruses in bats living in caves in southern China. That kicked off 16 years of research. By 2017, she and her team had formally established that the 2003 SARS outbreak had originated from bats, confirming the first discovery of bat SARS coves highly similar to human SARS cove. The research was widely regarded as groundbreaking, confirming the source of the first major coronavirus outbreak also enabled them to identify that another one was possible. We're going to begin here with the outbreak of a mystery virus in China. Concern is growing over a possible outbreak of a new SARS-like virus. Then a new strain of SARS emerged. The epicenter was, of course, Wuhan. Focus soon turned to the lab. Xi's previous research helped experts quickly identify the origin of the new virus in bats. But it was also that research and the lab's location in Wuhan which triggered a wave of speculation that the virus had somehow leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Good evening, everybody. Right now, the diagnosis is in. That flu at the U.S. Naval Academy is Russian. Lab leaks aren't unheard of. In 1977, the H1N1 influenza A virus reappeared in China and Russia after a 20-year absence. Samples incubated in monkey tissue produced seven out of 12 positives after three days. Dubbed the red flu, it soon spread to other countries. Press at the time reported how the outbreak had baffled scientists. They discovered something unusual. Put simply, the virus was missing decades of evolution. The virus has spread all over. We have... The genetic sequence was nearly identical to when it was last seen in 1957. This led to the common belief that a frozen sample was accidentally leaked, probably during a vaccine trial. And in 2004, China reported four new cases of SARS-CoV-1. Two of those infected were from the Chinese National Institute of Virology in Beijing. The World Health Organization cited that they were known to be engaged in research involving the SARS coronavirus. Lab leaks are rare and most have involved existing pathogens. SARS-CoV-2 doesn't fit into that category as it hadn't been seen before. So where does that leave the lab in Wuhan? There is one aspect of Xi's research that comes into play and it contributed to the theory that not only was the virus leaked, it was man-made. In 2015, she and Ralph Barrick, a virologist at the University of North Carolina, published a study using a method called gain of function, or GOF. Here's a very simplified explanation. They took a sample of coronavirus found in bats. It wasn't infectious to humans, but they wanted to see whether it had that potential. So they modified it, creating a new SARS-like virus Testing confirmed that this new hybrid virus could infect human tissue. So why did they do it? 
One basic idea of GOF is that enhancing pathogens to be more dangerous to humans enables researchers to predict how a naturally occurring virus might develop and behave in the future. So what about SARS-CoV-2? Following numerous studies into its genetic makeup, medical journal The Lancet published a statement saying they overwhelmingly conclude that this coronavirus originated in wildlife. In other words, they couldn't find any evidence in the structure of the virus that supported the theory that the virus was man-made. This evidence for natural evolution was supported by data on SARS-CoV-2's backbone, its overall molecular structure. Lab-engineered viruses only use backbones that are currently in existence. The SARS-CoV-2 one differed substantially to any previously recorded and had all the hallmarks of natural evolution. At the time of publication, there is no evidence to prove that SARS-CoV-2 leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. There is also no evidence to prove that it didn't. That gap in knowledge has been filled by conspiracies. Conspiracies focused on research that has arguably provided our most comprehensive understanding of the origins of this global pandemic, far beyond patient zero.